Here's your too long didn't watch summary. Max Sound Corporation, stock ticker Max D, has been fighting in court against Google for almost seven years over an alleged patent and trade secret infringement. There's so much information about these cases that this video is only going to cover one half of them, the patent part. Max Sound lost its patent case in federal district court because it didn't have proof that it had rights to sue and now owes over $800,000 in legal fees to Google. However, there may be a slim option to appeal the case further and there's a new case from the newest owner of the patent that might give the fight a new look. Stick with me here to learn all about Max Sound versus Google as I take you through part one of this saga, the patent wars. Hello and welcome to another legal education video. Remember that this is not financial or legal advice. I'm just here to help you with your due diligence. If you like the video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe to the channel. Also, big news is we now have a Discord server. Come hang out with other stock and legal education folks. And if you're new to the stock world, come practice trading with the Play Money Stock Bot and show everyone what it takes to be a day trader. We're just getting started, but it's a place for you to chat about your legal and stock questions in real time with me and other members of the community. We've also got a few stock trading friends on there talking about how they look at stocks and share your trading and learning adventure. Check for the Discord link in the description below and I'll see you on there soon. Before I start, I want to give you some real advice, so listen up. There's always more to a company than the lawsuits it's fighting, and that goes for any company out there. Do a full due diligence assessment when making investment decisions. The stuff I'm talking about here is only one piece of the corporation puzzle. All right, let's go. I want to take you all back to the year 2014, back long before we all wore masks, before we got stimulus checks on the regular, and way back when GameStop was just a nearly bankrupt place where you got stiffed on a used game trade-in. In June of 2014, a digital audio corporation called Max Sound and a communications group called VSL Communications, which I'm going to call VC, made an agreement to name Max Sound, who I'll refer to now as Max D. So we've got VC and Max D, making an agreement to make Max D the exclusive agent to enforce all of VC's patent rights. This included the patent to a data transmission system that basically took a lot of data, sent it to the internet, like video or audio, and used an incredibly low amount of bandwidth for the high size of the data. The weird thing though was that the patent at the time was owned by a company called Vedanti Services Limited. That was a separate company that was a subsidiary of VC. I'm gonna call this one VSL. So we've got Max D working with VC. VC has a subsidiary VSL. Don't worry if you're confused already because it's going to get even more complex. Two months later in August 2014, VC and Max Sound file lawsuits against Google in a few different places accusing Google of patent infringement and trade secret violations. The companies then decide to voluntarily dismiss those cases a few months later and together filed a federal lawsuit for patent infringement. And that's where we come to Max Sound Corporation versus Google in the Northern District of California Federal Court. Here's what was at issue in the case. Max D alleged that in 2010, while Google and VSL, not VC, the group they have the agreement with, VSL is a subsidiary of VC, when Google and VSL were negotiating about acquiring some of VSL's digital video streaming technology, Google was able to access information about some of VSL's patented technology, and then suddenly started using the technology in all of its platforms, including the platform that you're using right now to watch this video. Those are all the allegations which have not been proven true or false in the cases, and you'll see why in a minute. In May 2015, Google tried to get the case thrown out with what's called a motion to dismiss. Google was arguing that the patents just weren't good anymore, but the court ruled otherwise and upheld the patents. Later that year in November, Google tried to get the case thrown out again with another motion to dismiss, but this time they were successful. The judge ruled that Max D was not able to sue on the patent because they didn't own it. VSL did. Remember, VSL is the subsidiary of VC, Vedanti Communications the company that made the deal with Max D. The judge said that there was no evidence to suggest that VSL intended to give its patent rights to VC, so VC never had any patent rights to grant to Max D in their agreement. The court didn't touch the merits of the case though, meaning that it didn't review whether anything Max D alleged about Google's theft of patented technology was true or not. Max D spent all of 2016 appealing this ruling with the Federal Appeals Court. Meanwhile, Max D, VC, and VSL all had a little contract fight because of the confusion over who actually owned the patent rights. 
and they came out with a new agreement granting co-ownership to the patent among the three. VSL, that's that subsidiary group, dissolved and ceased to exist just about a month later. Let's go back to the appeal. Well, back in January 2017, the appeals court ruled that the judge was right in throwing out the case and affirmed the judgment against Max D. They didn't give any explanation why, though. After the appeal finishes, it goes back down to the district court judge, who then orders Max D to pay over $800,000 to Google in attorney's fees for bringing a case with no grounds to sue. That was the reason why the motion to dismiss succeeded. There was no grounds, no standing to bring the case. Almost two years of appeals later, Max D found itself on the losing end again, but again, the federal appeals court gave no explanation why it affirmed the lower court judge's decision. Let me step aside here and explain why this could be. When judges write their opinion in a ruling, that opinion can be used in future cases as an argument for what's called precedence, meaning that if the appeals court explained why they were sticking with the lower court's decision, that explanation could show up in future cases as a lawyer's argument for a party. Judges will often intentionally leave out explanations to ensure that this is truly a case-by-case -case ruling. On the other hand, they could have just been having a busy day and didn't care to write more than with a bare-bones order. That's a federal judge's prerogative to do so or not to do so. So here we are in 2021, and there's been some movement on the case. This week, in fact. On March 11th, Google asked the court to rule that a new case, brought by a new company with Vedanti in the name, was related to the Max D case and thus should be treated the same. Now when a case is ruled as being related to another case, it means that case can get sent to the same court and heard by the same judge as the other related case. And it's viewed together with those related cases. So if this other Vedanti case is deemed to be related to Max Sound versus Google, then it might be headed for the same path. But let's talk about this other case. It's June 2020. The patent rights to the same data transmission system that I've been talking about this whole time get assigned to a new California company called Vedanti Licensing Limited, which we'll call VLL. Two weeks later, VLL files a lawsuit in federal court against Google for patent infringement. It's essentially the same accusations as in the Max D case, but with one big difference. VLL definitely owns the patent. It's even on the patent record at the time. So this time, we've got the undisputed owner of the patent filing the patent infringement lawsuit. VLL files the lawsuit in Southern District Federal Court in California. Remember that Max D's case was in the Northern District Federal Court in California. Totally different court, totally different judge. So hopefully they think maybe a totally different outcome. However, this month, March 2021, with the case about nine months old, Google asked the court to do what's called a venue change. They want to move the case to the Northern District Federal Court. Remember, that's where they fought with Max D over the same patent. On March 15th, the case was reassigned to the Northern District Federal Court. So, we've got two cases now in the same court, with Google asking the court to rule that the cases are related so that they can be considered together by the same judge. From a procedural standpoint, Max D and VLL were supposed to have responded to the request about making the cases related by March 15th. Only one response has appeared on the docket publicly, and that's from Max D's former attorneys saying they no longer represent the company and they can't do the response on its behalf. Does this mean the cases are going to be ruled as related by default? Well, we'll just have to watch the docket this week and see. Either way, let's review where Max D stands on the patent infringement cases. They owe Google $800,000 in legal fees, but they may still try to appeal some of those rulings. The SEC filings have indicated that the $800,000 has already been accounted for on the balance sheet a few years ago. VLL has been moved to the same court with their similar case with slightly different facts. Only time can tell us if VLL's case has a better chance of winning than Max D's did. But I will say, since the Max D case was thrown out on the basis that Max D didn't own the rights to the patents at the time of the lawsuit, VLL doesn't have that issue since they officially own the patent from the day they filed the lawsuit. What remains to be seen is whether Max D has any connection to VLL's patent. I haven't found anything that confirms that Max D has an agreement with this newer entity, VLL, on that patent or any financial interest in it. Max Sound is not mentioned in the complaint and is not registered as a party to that case. Now that doesn't mean they don't have an interest in the case. It only means that I do not know and I cannot tell you whether or not Max D has any financial interest in the judgment if VLL were to win its case. I can only tell you that the case is there and it's moving forward in the same court as the Max D case on the same issue about the same patent. That's as far as I can see right now on this patent infringement case. 
Next time in part two, I'll talk about the other half of the Max D and Google saga, the trade secrets case Atia versus Google, which has a hearing coming up in April. Thanks for watching. Come hang out in the Discord where I've posted some of the court documents that I used on this case, and I'm happy to talk more about what I found during my research. Please subscribe to the channel, and I'll be following these cases and uploading more videos soon. Remember to do your own due diligence, and the whole due diligence, not just looking at the legal side of things, and please make informed decisions, and we'll see you next time.